So it's in some ways that's similar to fate where you have these all these decisions some of them complex or taking place but they have nothing directly um but they kind of take you out of the fiction to some extent i Is would it? say okay. that in star trek so far because we actually care a lot about our supporting cast we've made most of them up the game has the benefit of you choosing not to play your character your main character and playing supporting cast instead which has been very beneficial. It's turned the whole thing into much more. Uh, the fiction is an ensemble. So therefore, even if I call in a supporting cast without playing them, I have played them, or the other player has played them, or both of us have at different times. So we still kind of feel personally invested that they have you know, joined in on this. Yeah, so it's got a couple of things that give it you know a little more weight to finding all the different ways all these different characters can participate there's also the aesthetic of the crew working together which is a big big thing in the game you know the, the game's built for everybody to throw in with their various different tasks across the ship that's exciting it's part of the aesthetic of play so yeah. um so there are some features that keep it from being, you know, dreadful, but it does indeed to me sometimes have this sense of where's where's the whole thing of quit fucking around and roll. Right? It, 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 the, the strike rank urgency of RuneQuest, you know, that that uh, you know, that troll's bearing down on you. You've got six strike ranks before you can get let that arrow loose, right? You Your arrows were scattered and you had to go and grab one and you had to ready it. Lost yourself five strike ranks right there. One strike rank to shoot, six strike ranks before you can actually loose that arrow and this troll is charging you this entire time. If only you'd had an arrow, you know, just ready right there, you could have nailed them like three times by now. But no, here he comes. He's going mean, to, we all know his strike ranks coming in on me four strike ranks from now. I cannot lose this arrow until six strike ranks from now. Okay, as of, you know, at, at this point, I'm thinking, well, okay, I'll risk it. And then like a few strike ranks in before he gets to me, I suddenly think this is ridiculous. I abandon that action and I say, I jump behind, I'm going behind that rock. You know, how many strike okay. ranks is that? We count the meters. Two strike ranks. Fantastic. He gets to me in three. <laughs> I've got two strike ranks to get behind that rock. I do. I go. Right? That is not very evident in a system like the kind that we're talking about. Even one that I think, I mean, is much more enjoyable than my experiences with Fate. The Modifius system is more enjoyable than that, for sure. Okay. But it does lack that particular you know, edgy sorcerer circle of hands like sense or in troll babe, which I pick because the scale of action is so much bigger. So this isn't a matter just of scale of action. If we just narrow the scale down to second by second, we'll get these moments. That's not true. Right. Troll babe. We could, if we're using like the single roll, single phase, uh, uh, the, the, um, what do they call it? It's my own game. <laughs> How many rolls you need? Two out of three, I, four I out of three. What, I know right. what you're talking about. Say, yeah. say it's yeah. just one roll, a one roll conflict, right? Right. You can have re rolls, but it's just that one success that matters. Um, if you take it from there, I mean, that roll is handling an immense amount of fictional activity, yeah. but it still has that quality of you miss the first one. I got to narrate my troll babes, you know being, you know, thrown off her game in one fashion or another in the moment. And so then the question is, do I roll again? Right. And, and so, it's, an, yeah. it's, it's an, an immediate question and you don't have to consult all sorts of charts. You and, absolutely do. Yeah. You have no recourse for running around looking for bonuses. Don't yeah. go looking for, oh, let me see if I can cobble up these bonuses. Nope, nope, nope. 
No. Right. <laughs> so too bad. And so it's it's not uh, you know, and then there's no and God help us, there's none of this verbal negotiation of, well, if I, you know, pull my relationship button with your character, then your relation, you can accept a penalty if you hate my character right now or any of that kind of, you know, if, if, and would you, would you, and do you agree kind of discussion. So, um, so that's one element that I would just want you to consider is where is the, I mean, Bluntly, where is the, okay, you know the odds, you know the issues, you know what's up, you know how it works, just freaking do it already. Right. And no, you do not have time to go and run off and consult the ship's computer. Right. And who knows? I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of the, the, this, the thing I'm talking about. The, the troll and the arrow is an excellent example because that doesn't involve dice at all. In the troll and arrow situation, the consequence, maybe the fact that they dropped all their arrows was a, you know, for a previous event that did involve a roll. The fumble table in RuneQuest is notable. Um, but, uh, but still, I mean, that's your situation. Right now, before your action is completed, before the troll's action is completed, we know. And you do have choices. Right. But you don't get to sit back and look across the whole array of 15 different systemic options to try to. Right. Know, the fiction will not let you do that. The fiction says, right. I, I believe I see that troll's axe. A long time ago, there was a sorcerer game that was very unsatisfying to one of the players at a convention. And I was not satisfied with the player either during play and I characterized the moment where I kind of just gave up on them was when, uh, you know, a, a, a foe, uh, unlimbered a, a dangerous automatic firearm and was unleashing at the guy. And I said, okay, you know, what, what do you do? Let's, let's get ready for the roll. I got my dice. Say what you're doing. Grab your dice. You know, let's do it. And he said, what are my stakes? Oh, no. <laughs> so he, he. I was really he, puzzled. I was like, yeah, he's <laughs> shooting an Uzi at you. Roll but, your dice. <laughs> you know? <laughs> What do but, you do? I mean, the, <laughs> it's interesting because the only, that's not a normal reaction, right? Like the only reason somebody would say that is they must have had some kind of training, right? Like some sort of play experience where that was the expected standard, right? Right, or they I mean, had a, they, yeah. or they had beliefs about sorcerer that it was the kind of game where you do that. Which oh, normal, okay, perhaps. right. But the okay. idea being that there was obviously something to negotiate about what was happening. Whether, I mean, yes. the most innocent version would be just, okay, what happens if I fail? But it's not that hard in Sorcerer <laughs> to know that. But the, but the point being that, uh, that, in, in many ways, it was a belief that there are elements of the way we talk about this that will change what could happen. Right. And we need to work that all out. And I'm saying that in the kind of system that Sorcerer is, there is no working out anything through right. any such talk. Right. right. So, you know, no, you can't roll to see if you have your Uzi, right? You know, that's or whatever. So um, I think that I think that I'm trying to get across the idea of what is the immediacy of the decision making and resolutions, and where do you want them? And I'm trying also to say that this isn't about the scale of the conflict. You can have I a scale, be, yeah, be at whatever scale you want. The yeah. Distinction, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, you mm-hmm. could have a small scale and still have this huge. Right, right. Well, we've seen that uh, negotiation seen, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. we've seen mm-hmm. second by second play where it's like whether the elf got behind the rock in time and everybody just want to kill myself at the table until they stop, so they will stop talking. Um, right. But the uh, the the situation here is to say go back to those principles we talked about. What are the working pieces of the game which make it important that I'm playing this character? <laughs> there are games in which the mechanics are absolutely exactly the same for every character, but it depends very, it matters very greatly who they are, right? Uh, that does happen. So we're not necessarily just talking about different power sets. But you mean like the Mountain Witch, for example? The Mountain like Witch and Full Babe are both example, good examples. The okay. mechanics for every character are the same for every character. So, um, the yeah, I mean, that that's a good example. So, But the point is that there is some reason, whether it's differing power sets or it's differing motivational or whatever you, whatever you want to call it, aspects of the character that makes it important that this is the character in this situation and not that character, number one. Number two, that um, it matters who's at the table. It matters who, who is sitting behind that sheet, who is, who is playing this character. Um, and to think about that, especially if you're going to have high character turnover, you might want to think about that, especially in terms of how does that apply to a person in play if their character meets a horrible fate and play continues? What do they do? Um, uh, you mean in terms of like not having player elimination? Right, correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. So there's that element of it. And then there's also the issue of... Um, How am I going to put this? It seems to me as though a mountain witch or circle of hands kind of idea is worth at least considering that there is a way to play. Now, in the mountain witch, you only ever play that one character. It's a very delimited period of play. But in but in the mountain witch, if your character dies, you continue to play using all of the trust mechanics that you already have. Um, and those don't change. You just keep playing using the trust mechanics. And so um, in Circle of Hands, the character is killed but becomes a wraith until the end of that particular venture. Um, and then after that is never seen again, and you're going to be playing a different character anyway by the rules for the next one. So the circle has become smaller, but you know you, you never stopped playing. You know, through that process. So um, I'm not saying either of those is the model to follow, but it does seem that in order for the consequence to the character to be as dire as you're talking about, that there needs to be some, some feature. We need to take that into account, some feature to prevent right. players just being eliminated and right. having nothing to do. Right, right. And then there's lots yeah. of interesting things. There's a, a game called, uh, it was one of the Ronnie's games. Um, Joe Prince did it. It was called The Dragon Versus the Gun. And it everybody started with a player character, and it was an elimination, character elimination kind of game. They, they get whittled down. And one by one, if you were eliminated then you basically suddenly got game master powers that hadn't been in play in the game before Mm. and then when someone else gets eliminated they get them too so the fun part being that in the early part of play there's one or two game masters and all these player characters and then in the later parts of play there's one or two player characters and all of these game masters oh that's interesting yeah um, that's and, a fun idea yeah yeah there's 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 yeah. exactly there's fun idea and especially because when i say game master it was a very specific set of rules and tasks rather right. than some vague abstract thing so mm-hmm. um 
so anyway, there's there's hundreds of different fun things you can do with this aspect of it, depending on, on what you would like. 